Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avendian welcoming you to Out of the Park Baseball 21. We have just two episodes left of OTP 21 before the release of Out of the Park Baseball 22. Uh, and so my goal is to get us through three seasons. Uh, 1918, 1919, and 1920 so that we can start OTP 22 off with a brand new team. Um, which should be very interesting, I think, to start off with a brand new team. With that said, let's get going. So my basically my goal is going to be let's let's get through two seasons in this episode, and that way the episode next Monday will only have one season. And hopefully by then, um, everything will be good. And we'll be ready to start planning for OTP 22. I'll also talk about possible teams that I'll take over in 1921. Uh, so that'll be... You'll still get a good bit of content next week. You just won't get quite as much. Because I want to make sure we're starting with a brand new team. And that we hit the ground running with OTP 22. Very exciting stuff. Um, I did not actually play my last game of spring training. We got some people to clear out. So, I presently have 19 pitchers. And friends, 11 is about my max. Keating, Miners. Cooper, Miners. Cashin, Miners. Penner's never been great in AAA. I think he could use some more reps in the Miners. I hope you do too. Uh, Tin Cup. My, my dude, I don't know what happened to you. There was a time when I trusted you and considered you one of the best relievers. I think injury is what happened to you. I think you had some sort of... Yeah, this bone spur has just completely killed any skill that you have as a pitcher. Like, if we check out his scouting, at one point he was not like a great control pitcher, but at least a good one. And ever since, like, dude, this is not okay. You cannot be trusted. And I don't care what your potential says. You just walk too many people. So you're going to the miners. Maybe you'll figure it out. Maybe you won't. Uh, Smith and Old Ham, because Old Ham sounds gross. Wither up. Eleven. Perfection. <clears throat> um, in all honesty, I'll probably just leave this pitching staff as is. I don't feel any particular need to change anything here. Um, yeah, I think this is real good, and I think we're in great shape. So... This is fine. And then, of course, the overall best starter will be... That never gets old. You might think it gets old, but it doesn't. You actually get old. I'm kidding. Bunny brief to the miners. Easy peasy. Three more people down to the miners. Ayers has to be one of them. He's not that impressive. I just feel like minoski has got a bit more to show me in AAA before I call him up permanently. Uh, 
And I mean, I'd rather have Reesberg. At least he plays different positions well. So we're going to go ahead and let's try to trade Joe Cassidy. Although, I'll be honest with you, I don't expect to get... Yeah, we don't get anything for him. I'm not shocked. We can waive him. All right. Let's go ahead and sim up to opening day, and then we will rebuild the roster to do the things. <clears throat> we have our usual collapses because of spring training. That's not a shock. That's nice. Okie dokie. Oh, I need to set this up. Let's nuke all of this. <clears throat> uh, neither of you are very good hitters. You can both not hit. Like, I wish the game wouldn't keep changing this when I tell you don't use him as a two-way player. I mean, they're not good hitters. So I don't really get a lot of the goal here. Apparently they're adding a lot more strategy options, which I think sounds lovely and is something that I think will greatly improve the game. Potentially. Um, right. The best hitter on the team remains Heine Zimmerman. Uh, so I think Zimmerman slots in nicely as the number three. Jack Smith is the leadoff guy. And Sam Rice is the number two hitter. Nothing that any of these three players did last season convinces me that they can't handle these particular roles. <clears throat> I am a little bit nervous about relying heavily on Sam Rice as the number two hitter. But I think he does a good enough job that he can stay there for now. Who's my cleanup hitter going to be? It's going to be Vic Sayer. Uh, I think he's definitely proven that he is a reliable power source. And even if he's not great against lefty, he's still not terrible. Number five... I think we've probably carved out a bit more value out of one Mr. Zach Wheat by not making him an everyday hitter. And I'd like to give him at least one more chance to see if this is truly his new normal or if there's still more power left that he can show for us. Because... I mean, he is the, he's the, the third best power hitter on the team, and it's not particularly close. I know that Briss Lord has that sick contact and gap power combination that definitely leads me to believe that he maybe deserves a bit more playing time than he's been getting from us. But the thing is, if I play Briss Lord in left field every day, I have to get rid of Zach Wheat. At that point, Zach, become, Zach Wheat becomes a liability. There's nothing that he would provide to this team other than a giant expenditure of cash. We could trade Zach Wheat. And hope that some other team is dumb enough to trade for him. I mean, I don't know that I would do it. In fact, I think it would be pretty silly for another team to do it. But maybe there's at least one team that disagrees. Because I've got to say, we've given him less responsibility, but he still isn't hitting the way he used to. His contact is gone. His patience is gone. A lot of his power has just decayed. I think this is just a classic example of a player that peaked as a youngster and will probably never reach those peaks again. 
So I think we trade Zach Wheat. And then we call up Monoski. And then Monoski becomes... And then uh, Briss Lord can start every day for this season and left. And we can start grooming Monoski to take on bigger and bigger roles. I might even leave Monoski in, in AAA, even if we do trade Wheat. Well, something happens to Briss Lord. I just frankly think he's a really great player that we've kind of misused. I mean, the guy hasn't pl appeared in 100 games since 1914, and maybe that's fine, but I think we're, we're not getting the most out of him that we could, and I'd like to give him that opportunity. So, if we trade Zach Wheat, what would we most like? A starting pitcher is always a good answer to that question. If we can get a 60 plus. Other than that, this is a team that's won back-to-back -back world championships. There's not a huge amount of places they can clearly get better. Uh, third base is one of those areas. We could definitely upgrade at third. We could upgrade at shortstop. But I think I'd rather focus on, like, an elite-level prospect who's maybe a couple of years away. Because there's some other players on this team that are a bit on the old side. But not many. But, I mean, eventually Heine Zimmerman is going to start declining. He's already 31. And I know he just finished a fantastic season... Did he win another MVP? My friend, he did not, but that doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be an MVP to be an important contributor. So I think we trade him for a prospect. Maybe two or three, but definitely one prospect, and we want someone that's got a ton of upside to him. Because we're paying an awful lot of money to a player whose abilities have clearly deserted him. Look, I can't ignore the statistical record. I can't. I took him away from facing left-handed pitching in the hopes of seeing him overall get better, and then he didn't. So we're going to trade him. And we're going to try to get prospects, and we're going to see the very best prospects we can get. I've got one reliever. And that's it. Then let's see if we can get the very best player we can. Like, I'm not even looking at players if they're not at least a 60. Bruh, you are, I mean, I guess you're not terrible. But you're pretty far away from being ready for the big leagues. Maybe I held on to Zach too long. Or maybe a guy like Pete Wilson is actually worth it. <clears throat> like, he's clearly the best reliever in the majors. Like, clearly. It seems like kind of gilding the lily, but I guess there's value in it. And having one of the very best relievers to ever relieve. So if I did that, could I get you to add in another prospect? You would never give me Wade Hoyt, and you can't anyway because you just drafted him last year. I mean, there's always Pickles Dillhofer. I don't know how you can can say no to that. They just don't have much. Let's do it. I know the fans are going to be pissed about that. This doesn't mean I have to get rid of another reliever. Sorry, Consulman. You are Consul gone. 
Oh, you can go to AAA, Joe Cassidy. And then Marty, I'm going to put you on use more often duty. And Pete Wilson, you're going to be my stopper. And you're going to come in if, if it's the eighth or a close game. And maybe a truly dominant relief ace is going to be worth more to us than Zach Wheat would be. I honestly think it might be. So the million dollar question is, do I call up Minoski or do I just let him chill in the minors and play every day? Um, I still think Minoski hasn't really earned a starting job. So here would be a great time to check the waiver wire. Is anyone trying to sneak past a fairly decent outfielder? Pete Compton's not very good. I kind of like the idea of actually claiming Sam Crawford for the last spot and just making him a pinch hitter. Like, he's still a pretty decent all-around hitter, right? There's still, I think there's still some value to be wrung out of this particular turnip. All right, I'm going to leave his that extra roster spot open until he's ready. So Briss Lord is going to come in and be my everyday left fielder. This is putting a lot on Frank Gilhuey's shoulders, but frankly, I think he can handle it. Ah, uh, frankly. Um, and we'll see how that works out for us. Charlie Deal is probably the best all-around hitter for the sixth spot. And then Ray Schalk. And then eighth hitter is going to be Everett Scott. And then fill in the depth chart. I'm good with that. Copy, copy. Paste, paste. And I do actually want to make sure that we have shortlisted Zach Wheat. Because I actually, I genuinely want to track him and see how he does. I'm just going to sim ahead one week. Damn it, somebody else got Sam Crawford. That's annoying. Can I get Mike Fitzgerald? He's got decent speed. He can play either corner position. He's not the worst hitter. Oh, I got Mike Fitzgerald. I guess that's something. Um. <clears throat> That just helps give us a little bit more depth, and that way I'm not I don't feel forced to rush what's his face to the majors. Alright. Let us progress, my dear friends. Or uh my starting shortstop could injure his shoulder and we could be in a world of hurt with that.
Yeah, y'all suck. Um, are there any decent free agents? I mean, there's one free agent. I'd hardly consider him decent. All right, Bunny Brief, I would like to trade you for a shortstop. I'm sorry, I should have specified a good shortstop. That's on me. It's my old Detroit friend, Dick Egan. I remember you. I would happily take Ray Chapman for the short term. And then I guess in the meantime, Mr. Reesberg here is going to fill in as the shortstop. Like, it's not ideal, but it'll work until I can acquire an appropriately talented backup. Like, I think Swede Reesberg's feature is probably at, sh at second base or maybe third, but he's definitely not a thing right now. All right, let's complete the trade. Let's call him up. And remember that part where I said you could be the starting shortstop? I lied, Mr. Reesberg. I got Ray Chapman now. And it all may seem like you may be thinking to yourself, well, Abby, Everett Scott's only out for six weeks. And that's unquestionably true. However, we don't have a ton of depth in the minors. And even more importantly, um, if we're competing for the World Series, we can't afford to lose ground. Or, you know, you could also cripple my fucking second baseman. And... <sighs> you know what? I'm, I'm just going to call up Driscoll just because I need a warm body. I really don't wanna, but I don't really have a better choice. Because the cupboard's gotten kind of bare when it comes to defensive players. Or batters, that's what they're called. So I guess Reesberg is starting, and he's starting in second base, but most importantly, this cripples us and takes away our, our number three hitter. So there's going to be an awful lot of extra pressure on this team right now. And this is probably going to cost us the pennant. I truly believe that this is going to cost us the pennant. Because we've lost Heine Zimmerman and we've lost Everett Scott. Everett Scott, I love his glove, but I'm not going to cry if we don't have his bat. But I'm extremely upset about losing Heine Zimmerman. And I, I really hope that Mr. X Black Sock, or I guess never was Black Sock, Swede Reesberg can offer us something in the short term. But I'm not super hopeful about that. So in one fell swoop, our season might be dead already. It also might not, but I'm not feeling real good about our chances right now. I mean, Ray Schalk is a better hitter now. That's nice to know. Some reasonable improvements. Also some pretty big dips. Okay. Could I trade, like, Jack Onslow for a middle infielder?
Like, surely somebody is in desperate need of a catcher. Second base, please. Especially while take on salary. I mean, I guess Kid Butler is an amazing second baseman, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Berger can kind of hit. Jim DeLahanty is not a second baseman. If there was a player here who played a couple of different positions quite well, you know, I will trade for Kid Butler, but I don't think I necessarily want him in the majors. Or if I do want him in the majors, I want him in a fairly minor role. Like, Pages only plays third, right? That significantly reduces his utility to me. Whereas someone like Kid Butler is a bit more useful. I know he's not a great hitter, but he's at least interesting. And I really want him more for his glove than anything else. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but this is already looking like kind of a lost season. Especially if... Oh, Everett Scott's just going to miss one more week. That's fine. All right. So now that I have Everett Scott back, I kind of don't need Ray Chapman. Billy Orr is just not helpful. So I'll probably keep Chapman on the roster, but just make Everett Scott my starting shortstop again. Because I'm paying him for defense, right? I mean, I guess I could just make Chapman play second. Like, his overall skill set suggests he'd probably be a pretty good one. He's just never had to learn it. So let's try it. Let's, let's let Ray Chapman figure out second base. Wow, you really don't like... You either really don't like Briss Lord or you really love Gil Huey. Gil Huey is having a pretty damn amazing season, so maybe that's all it is. We'll see what happens there. It does make me feel a little bit nervous about Ray Chapman being on the Boston Red Sox, but that's okay. Ah, uh, water. Delicious. I have a very nasty suspicion here. Yep. Look who's returned to Earth. Look who has finally decided that it's time to age. It's the overall former best pitcher in the majors. He's still an outstanding pitcher, don't get me wrong. He's just not the same level he used to be. Which is going to happen eventually anyway, right? But this, again, it does it is going to create some issues for us. Because if he's allowing that many runs, especially when our, our offense is severely weakened... I don't like our chances, friends. All right, so we get Heine Zimmerman back, which we desperately needed. So good old Patty Driscoll goes back to the minors. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman comes in. Uh, and you're immediately going to start hitting third again. That just goes without saying. Like, and I and it's probably gonna make Ray Chapman angry, and I don't want that, but I'm also not gonna play Ray Chapman when I have Heine Zimmerman, who's just better at everything. I 
Look, he learned second base pretty damn well. Um, so that's good news. You know what? I shouldn't have said anything. This is on me. Where Orval overall is just like... Pfft. You know what? You just called me out and called me old. I'm gonna throw a fucking no-hitter. That'll show you. You know what? How many no-hitters have been in Major League history? Quite a few. Quite a few. Pete Alexander had a no-hitter and I missed it? Did I comment on that or not? I genuinely don't remember. I feel kind of silly, though. Huh. Well done, Mr. Overall. Maybe it's having your old buddy Overall back. Maybe you go, like, fishing together or something like that. Who can say? I don't think it's likely to make a difference, though, to be quite frank with you. Oh, good lord. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nobody, nope, 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 nope. Uh, Wilbur Cooper, welcome back to the majors, I guess. Barnes is better. Barnes, you're my new ace. No pressure. Uh, you're going to be middle relief, long relief. I know Zib will actually learn how to throw for freaking control. We can only hope. Like, if Ray Schalk just becomes an average contact hitter, he's going to be one of the best players in the majors. Because he's a fucking catcher. That's great at being a catcher. Like, I'm incredibly pleased with his abilities. An excellent ninth round draft pick if I do say so myself. And I do say so. And maybe you say so, too. I don't know. Ah, all-star game time. Overall did make the roster as well he should have. Pete Wilson made it, so at least that's paying off. Charlie Deal made it. He's having an amazing season. So is Jack Smith. It looks like that's it, which is fine. Uh, I can I can accept that. Oh, great, Ty Cobb is hitting well again. Not that it matters. Like, the Yankees are actually, actually kind of shit. Um, I don't know that I necessarily want to call anybody up. Maybe Minoski. How is Brist Lord actually hitting this season? He's hitting well enough. Like, I mean, I wanted him to hit for contact, and I wanted him to hit doubles, and he's doing both of those things quite well. Um, Minoski is probably going to start next season with the Red Sox. And we're just going to have to find something else to do with Briss Lord. Because holy shit, he's a damn fine player. Vic. Bruh. Get your shit together. Please. You're absolutely killing us with this constant seesaw. Of am I going to hit or am I not going to hit? Like, bro. 
you cannot be this bad. This is arguably even worse than Heine Zimmerman getting hurt. Because at least I was able to find some talented players to fill in for him. This whole, up oh, time to shit the bed again, needs to stop. There's an awful lot riding on you being successful. And when you're not successful, you make the whole rest of the damn team worse. Like, bruh. All right. Remember, anybody we trade for won't actually be eligible for the playoffs. That's why I kind of don't care. Shulk is getting better. Sayer is looking a little better. I guess that's something. It's fine. Minoski is really starting to force the issue. Oh, he broke through. That was the one hole in your game, is you weren't unlocking your full contact ability. You're now like the perfect number two hitter or leadoff hitter. Which means I could take a hitter like a Jack Smith or a Sam Rice and bat him lower in the lineup where they can do even more damage. Let's not bury the lead here. Jack Smith is hitting worse too. Like last season he was sensational. This year he's fine. Yeah, I think that might be what we do next season is go ahead and call up like trade Briss Lord like trade him at the peak of his abilities right hope somebody bites and then Minoski becomes a new leadoff guy because he's so perfectly suited for it he's got great contact excellent discipline doesn't strike out very much He's had exactly one bad season of OBP, which was his cup of coffee with Boston last year. Um, I love everything about it. Mm. Game, please don't. You're forcing me to put Wilbur Cooper back in the rotation, aren't you? He just doesn't throw strikes. I don't know if I can trust him. Let's do filling him. I just think he's a better starter. I think he's just the better pitcher. And then I guess uh, Konzelman can be like a middle reliever or some shit. I don't really care. And then, Wilbur, you're going to be a new emergency starter long relief. That's going to be your new role. Wilbur. Pete Wilson has come in as advertised. And even if he wasn't, like, the megastar he has been the past couple of seasons, he's been real good. Real, real good. And I think that was a pretty good acquisition for us. Ooh. Rice and Shocker both, both get her done. Now, this is actually very interesting. Um, we still have a chance to make the playoffs. Which I definitely did not expect. Like, we were extremely bad for the first half of the season. Let's just find out what happens, friends. That's all we can do, right? Uh, 
Uh, you can come back, Jesse Barnes. You've been a really good starter. How many starts did you make? You made nine, and you made nine excellent starts. And then that way I can put you as long relief emergency starter. Keep going. Oh, I didn't check my coaches. I as as I also didn't have a manager for the rookie league all season. That's a yikes. Jimbo, have a two-year deal. Are any of my coaches' contracts coming up? My hitting coach is coming up, and I think he's done an amazing job. Like, I know we were off to a slow start this year, but we're almost as good offensively as we were last year. And the year before that. So you know what, bruh? You can, you can come back. Thanks, my guy. And we're eliminated. And you know what? I'm not upset about that. A lot of things had to go pretty badly wrong for us to miss the playoffs this year. Not the least of which was losing our ace for the entire season. We were extremely competitive, and that we didn't make the World Series isn't a reflection on... And hey, the Browns won a World Series, even though the Phillies won 107 games, so haha, -ha, screw you, Phillies. Um, yeah, I am not... I am not upset about this. Now, maybe, my, maybe the owner is going to be super pissed... Huh, he wanted Pete Wilson. Okay. All right, let's do the easy choice. The mega easy choice. Minoski up to the majors. And I think we trade Briss Lord. I'm going to do that very beginning of the offseason here. And I want the very best player I can get in return. I'm going to trade Briss Lord now at the very peak of his value. And hope to get something incredible as a result. Like two wins isn't a lot, but it's pretty good. I mean, a guy like George Burns would be a nice addition to this team. Howdy, Caton. Bob Fisher. Hippo Vaughn. Why are you a reliever? Is it just because your third pitch is garbage? It's the only thing I can see. Chef Sweeney, you're not replacing my dude. You're a good all-around hitter, but you lack the upside of Sayer. Maybe I wait. Maybe I just wait and try to find a better offer for Briss Lord or something specific that I could use. Like, let's face reality. Uh, Briss Lord is going to miss most of next season, too. Or not Briss Lord, sorry, overall. And I like Jesse Barnes. I don't think he can hold up to being an ace over the whole season. So I think starting pitcher is pretty much my top priority. Who is the best pitcher I could get my hands on? Absolutely not. No. Ray Collins? Yes. There's a lot to love about Ray Collins, my dudes.
There's a man he doesn't disappoint. Lefty, lefty Tyler throws his left hand. Yeah, Ray Collins, easy pick. You've got some pretty damn good prospects, Chicago. Would you throw in another player? Like a Jimmy Dykes? No. Well, you can't trade him anyway. He's relatively close to taking that deal. I can't give you Jesse Barnes. I really can't. If you want Keating, you can have Keating. Because what you do is you give me... No, I think I'd rather actually have Flagstead. Because Flagstead's got a more interesting skill set, and he's a center fielder. You'd still take Keating. I am more than happy to give you Keating. And then... That's fine. I'm not even going to look at anyone else. I'm sorry the fans are sad about losing Briss Lord, but I genuinely think we have a better team with with Ray Collins. Because I just need another reliable starter. And now I have a four deep rotation that can go to five or even six deep. We talk about guys like Jesse Barnes and Wilbur Cooper. Um, and I genuinely believe that's going to serve us extremely well in a season where we're not going to have overall. We're just not. Uh, and I've already come to grips with that. Uh, sure, you can be activated, but it's not going to matter. Uh, gold Glove for Ray Schalk and Charlie Deal and Jack Smith. You know, we didn't look at who did well this season. Let's take a look. First of all, Sam freaking Rice. I'm just, I'm leaving that exactly where I put it. Sam freaking Rice. Charlie Deal. If any one player saw how weak we were this year and decided I'm going to fix it myself, it was Charlie Deal who won a gold glove but also hit extremely well. Jack Smith, great job. Such a great job. Everett Scott, he did it again. He hit right around league average and provided superb defense. Uh, Ray Schalk did cool off a little bit, but it's still been otherworldly. And he almost put up the same season he did last year, did Heine Zimmerman. So you know what? I'm going to chalk it up as a win for him and just hope he stays healthy this year. Vic. Bruh. I don't get you, dude. I don't get how your skill set can just completely evaporate from season to season. I just don't get it. I mean, maybe my scout's full of it and always has been, but he's still got good speed, a reasonable contact rate, and elite level power, and just nothing happened this season. I don't know if we're getting to the point where I can't trust you against lefties and I need to find you a partner. But I mean, this was the worst offensive season of your career. And I should be getting pretty regularly three to four wins a season out of you. And if I'm not getting that, then I need to upgrade. I need to find a new first baseman. 
Um, so we look at Babip. Is it? Do I not have that in this first screen? I guess I don't. Yeah, it's just like just certain years you just don't hit, and I can't I can't puzzle it out. I'm not sure what's going on there. Like 1914 and 1918, maybe you didn't like the beginning and end of World War One. Who knows? You've just been bad. Now your walk percentage did go up, and your strikeout percentage did come down, and these are normally both very very good things. But you just didn't hit the bloody ball. You saw more pitches per plate appearance. You just didn't hit. I can't figure it out. I don't know what happened to you this season. Unless it was just enemy hitters weren't scared of you anymore and they just walked you every chance they could. But you've always had a good batting eye. Like, they walked you 81 times in 1916, too, and you were much better. So I've got to hope that you figure shit out, or, then I, or I need to figure shit out. Also, Frank Gilhui has probably been the most maligned person on this team. Because all he does is contribute year in and year out, and I keep replacing him. Sorry, bro. But, I mean, it's Minoski's time. Uh, this gives me a classic leadoff guy. Or a classic number five hitter. I can really play him just about anywhere. Um, pitching, what went well, besides everyone getting hurt. I mean, Ray Collins didn't do any of that with us, but it's nice to see it. Urban Shocker had a very good year. So did Stan Kovaleski. So did Eddie Sakat. Like, we had a no-joke baller, super amazing, ultra-powerful, virtually perfect rotation this season. But we went from the Cy Young winner to not the Cy Young winner. And a Cy Young winner who also had an ever so slight decline in his overall abilities. Like he just got hit more. And, you know, everything else was phenomenal. I'm not mad about that. But he just got hit more. And that's going to happen. So we'll have to see how things turn out uh, this offseason. Um, you were giving me... No. That is what you were giving me. You are giving me no. I don't need a mediocre left fielder. Brooklyn, what is it about my team that makes you think that I'll just instantly cave... At your offer of garbage. Um. Bad Bill Dolan should not have had to wait three seasons to get into the Hall of Fame. But he'd better damn well do it this time. You really want George Haddock in the Hall of Fame? Like, what did you do that was so spectacular? I mean, maybe part of your issue is that your overall war is 62. Oh, no, I see. That's based on our war. If we look at just regular war, it's 44. I mean, he's super borderline, right? I'm deliberately going to the bottom and then looking my way back up. I know Rip Van Hollich from close to 300 games. I That's not enough for me, I don't think. Especially because his ERA is god-awful, right? Which means he got clobbered. He just 
stayed in just long enough to not have issues. I'll vote for Kip Selbach. I think he deserves it. Very strong all-around player. You love to see it. John McGraw, easy. Again, I don't know why he's waiting so long. I don't know why you wouldn't vote for a player with his skill set into the Hall of Fame, but then go nuts over other players that are arguably much worse. I mean, Napoleon Lajoie. Yes, he never played for Cleveland in this timeline, which seems very wrong to me, but come on, bruh. A guy with this track record has to go into the Hall. I'll throw a vote to Fielder Jones. He seems like a good dude. Um, Ed DeLahanty does have almost 4,000 hits. I can't not vote for him. And I think I'm comfortable with that ballot. I'm not going to vote for Nixie because it's not going to make a difference. Is there anybody in the 60 to 70 percent range? Like, I could push up, push over Bug Holiday. I think he deserves it. 160 homers has to be pretty damn close to leading the majors. Um, That's worth a lot. It's like, why would I throw away a vote on Silver King? He's not going to make it because all the AI voters care about is his freaking win-loss record. I hope George Van Haltren doesn't make it because of my vote. That would tickle me pink because he's not a good pitcher. Like, he pitched for an extremely long time. I will acknowledge that. But yeah, I'm this is who I'm voting for. If if you don't like it, then that's unfortunate. You will give me a bad starter. I'm I'm not that fussed by it. Is it because I don't have Collins in the official rotation yet? Here, boom, done. It was the best of nine World Series. I didn't realize that. Uh, Hall of Famer alert and Frankie Frisch. Was he the Fordham Flash? Yes. I don't know. I, I have no idea how I remember that, but I did. Yay me. Um, and then some other good players, but yeah, he's he's the big one, is Frankie Frisch. He was a Hall of Famer. Like, just, just look at this career. What a guy, right? What a guy. And he played for the Cardinals, I think, right? Yes, he did play for the Cardinals. Before that, he played for the New York Giants. I mean, he's not going to follow to me. I don't even know why I'm looking at him, but... I do have first round, two first-round picks, don't I? Because last draft was so bad. Now, I don't think we're going to get anything too exciting out of that, but it's nice to have two first-round picks and at least have options, right? All right. You're letting Bull Yuli go. I know my dude here is kind of a work in progress. He also pitched for Cleveland, didn't he? He did. He was on the, the 1920 World Series team. I remember that. He's a surprisingly good hitter. I, I don't see why anyone wouldn't draft him. 
He's a great athlete, and we'll find a place for him at some point in the future. Easy choice. Give him to me. Now. A Mickey O'Neal. I think you're an amazing talent as a player. However, Ray Schalk. Like, it's going to take a lot to get me to abandon Ray Schalk, and your skill set is not enough. Like, you're a very good hitter. Very good hitter. But I, I can't see it. I can't see drafting you and then just letting you rot in the minors. Bevo Leberveau looks like a pretty solid corner outfielder. Frank Ellerby looks like a very nice young third baseman. Either one of you would be lovely. I think Le Bourveau has a little bit of a better skill set, but Ellerby does play third, and that's eventually going to be an issue for us again. Um, we're going to take Ellerby, and we're going to let him tune up in the minors. And we're already at the point where I frankly don't really care, but I will at least look for batting potential so we can find another Sam Rice. Bro. Game. You're not going to give me lefty freaking O'Doul. In the sec- No. You wouldn't. Yeah, okay, he was a bad pitcher, and it doesn't bloody matter, because he was a damn fine hitter. Bruh. Just, yes. Give him to me. Lefty O'Doul, you are never throwing a single baseball in your entire life. You're just not. And if you start coming around quickly, like I bet you might, that's an easy choice. I'm going to go ahead and un I'll complete the rest of the draft because I got the best player in the draft in the second round. Like, seriously. Seriously. 50 freaking dollars. Even if Bull Yuli never turns out, I don't even care. Like, to get that much raw potential in the second round is, hmm. It's not as good as Sam Rice in the fourth round, but it's pretty damn good. Lefty, don't even think about it. Just take my offer. It's going to be great. You're going to be like, oh man, what a team. What a team. And I genuinely don't care about any of my own players. Uh, I might check the rule five if there's like an interesting player. Ooh, Gabby Kravath. Very nice. I could claim him. He could be my very own. But then again, why would I? Hmm? Just for a decent bat off the bench? I mean, I guess there's worse decisions you could make. For, like, another man on the roster. You know, you've got decent pop off the bench. I actually am seriously thinking of taking you. And then I'll just I'll just let you ride the pine all year and you can be a great pinch hitter. Unless any of you are like outstanding hitting and defensive catchers, I'll pass on the rest.
Yeah. Gavi, my bro, you were literally just here to be a a, a backup in field, a backup outfielder, and give me some some bats off the bench. Okay, lefty. Put down the pitcher's glove immediately. Uh, you can be, you can play whatever fucking position you want to play, but you can be a left fielder, sure. Please force him to be a left fielder. I do not want him ever pitching even one time in his major league career. Dolan, Knapp, Doyle, and DeLahanty all made the majors, as they all should have. John McGraw cannot buy good George Van Haltren. You were trash. You didn't deserve to make the Hall of Fame. Why are people not voting for John McGraw? I, I don't get it. Do they not understand what a good player looks like? Like, he's freaking sensational. He's probably the, the all-time leader in walks, or damn close to it. SM freaking H. He is not. He's not even in the top ten anymore. Yeah, bruh, John McGraw needs to make it. You, you need to put him in the Hall of Fame right now. Let's go. But all right. That's fine. That is lovely news. That is insanely good news. Oh no, don't drop my budget, no. What am I gonna do? I don't even spend half the money you give me. Eight five hundred. I still am utterly stunned that Lefty O'Doul made it to the second round. I'm delighted, of course, but utterly stunned. And it's all because the game randomly classified him as a pitcher. My bro, he is not a pitcher. He may have been at one point. He is not now. He is not now. Uh, we can let Ellerby have a go. Oh, uh, overall, I'm putting you on the, on the DL so I don't lose your... Your capabilities. Bruh. Bruh. I just find it so hilarious that that's happened to us a second time. That we got a really great player really late in the draft. Because everyone else is apparently dicking around when it was time to, uh, to do their scouting, yeah. Like, and obviously, this is not a guarantee, right? This is definitely not a guarantee that he is going to unleash all of his offensive potential. But I'll be damned if the 32nd overall pick is not the perfect place to find out. Uh, manager, go ahead and do your thing. You're really going to start Wilbur Cooper over Ray Collins. You're not. Okay, game. We need to have a talk about what makes someone a good starter in 1919. Walking a bunch of guys is not that. He's also a relatively decent backup first baseman, so that's that's good to know. Uh, you can do your thing. 
ooh, do I love this new lineup? I might love this new lineup. Take the pressure off of, of Sayer by not making him the cleanup guy, letting Zimmerman do it. Like, I never even thought about making Jack Smith the number three hitter. And I'm still not convinced he is the best number three hitter, but if I can get Zimmerman in a position where his power will be even more potent, I'm there, my bros. Bruh. I don't know why I keep saying bruh. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I need to put you in the shredder, don't I? I'm just going to sim for a bit with the microphone muted so that you don't have to hear my paper shredder running. There we go. A trade proposal. I am not giving you Urban Shocker. Just stop wasting both of our time. He is the good one in terms of my young pitching talent. So no. Cubs, thank you for, for calling, but seriously, please no. And there we go. So, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your baseball players. Seven relievers gotta go. George Smith, thanks for playing. Tin Cup, I don't even want you in my 40 man anymore. You disgust me. That's, no, that was mean of me. I'm sorry, Tin Cup. You don't disgust me. You're just not very good at your job. I don't want to give away Cooper for nothing. I really don't. And I'm not unconvinced he can't be a useful component to this roster. So I'm going to keep him. Why do all of these relievers just crash after a couple of seasons? It's never made sense to me. Like, this guy had arguably one of the better seasons of his career, and then he's just like, haha, nope. 20 point overall drop. All because his control and his stuff is a tiny bit worse. Whatever, bro. Wither up, you can go away. Nah, let's trade you. I don't want to risk losing you for nothing. And I bet somebody will pay me. No, they won't. Okay. What are we looking at here? I still got to go to three more pitchers. A uh, consulman to the miners. Um, Mikhail to the miners? No, he's going to say no. That's fair. Oldham, Ritter. We're at 11. Beautiful. All right. Mr. Mikhail. Why are you a long reliever? That is not your job. Your job is to be a middle reliever. The rest of you, though, you can do your thing. And that will be good. Erp. I mean, if Eddie Sakat wants to be the ace, I'm not going to tell him he can't. I can't break his heart like that. Uh, ears, you suck. Except for your name. Pachus, you don't even have a good name. 
LRB, I want you to play in the minors. Driscoll, you're just not very good. If I have Butler, I don't really need Orr. And then... I don't need six outfielders. So let me try to trade you for a prospect. Nobody wants you. Damn it, game. I can't give up Gavi. I'm just going to hope nobody claims Mike Fitzgerald, although I bet they will. That's it. That's that's 25. Lineup stays the same. Let me go ahead and generate a new depth chart. I don't mind Gilhui getting some frequent playing time. I think he can handle it, and I think he'd be decent at it. Wow. You're going to bench Sayer for Reesberg? All right. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it plays off. Is Sam Rice really a liability against left-handed pitching? He's just not as good. I guess I don't mind this, especially because Charlie Deal is great against either hand. I can live with this. And I guess Shulk in front of Sayer is acceptable. My bench coach is okay. He is a good egg. Okay, uh, minor league, these are some good players here. You're going to feel pretty stupid in a couple of seasons when mother-flipping Lefty O'Doul is the number one prospect in Major League Baseball. Like, this is just, honestly, a straight-up insult. Lefty O'Doul is only considered a 153rd best prospect, but having a potential of 75. Bruh. I know I said I would stop saying that, but I lied. Do I want George Uli? No, I don't. I want him to get a chance to, to grow into his role. And then we can address your skills and talents from there. Let's get her done. Oh god, why did I say that? Uh, everyone cleared waivers, which is either a very good or very bad sign. Like, it's like, your team sucks. We don't even want your players. Like, ouch. Ouch, bro. Not Brad Hogg, the guy who lost 25 games last year. I know pitcher wins and losses aren't terribly important, but that's unfortunate. Ray. Buddy. Uh, old Ham. Welcome back. Cooper. Jesse Barnes had a really good season, and I think he deserves a chance to be a starter again. Really? I don't agree with you. Like, I know you've had a really great on-base percentage a couple of times, but... 
I don't see it, dude. Uh, any big changes? Not hugely. Minoski's eye is improving, although his contact has dipped a bit. Yuli's throwing harder. Um, or Yule. I'm not sure how that's actually meant to be pronounced. To be honest with you, but he is definitely starting to force the issue. And you love to see it, right? Come on. Nice. Oh no, overall's actually aging now. I mean, it was bound to happen eventually. Poo. Big, stinky poo. I mean, right now I'm only keeping Yule in the minors because I feel that I have to. But he might very well be in the majors before too much longer. So we got overall back. And he's still the best starter on the roster. So no issues sending down Oldham. And putting him back where he belongs. Uh, Sakat just pitched. It is Kovaleski's turn in the rotation, we'll say. And then overall can have some chance to, to relax a bit. And then you're going to be a long relief emergency starter as well. I feel so bad for Jesse Barnes because he keeps getting opportunities, crushing them, and then I say, Mmm, sorry. But a multiple-time Cy Young winner just might get a little bit more of a hint than you. Minoski, I need to see a bit more from you. I really do. But, you know what, I will wait patiently and see what you can unlock for this team. Oh great, the team nobody wanted to get hot again has gotten hot again. Boom, number two overall. Man, he already looks like garbage now. Come on, game. Game. Okay. Stop. Do not, under any circumstances, throw pitches anymore. You should be an amazing baseball hitter, not a pitcher. I don't want you pitching. Stop pitching. Um, let me do coaching real quick. Uh, you can come back, Mr. Swan, unless John Clarkson would get along even better with the Red Sox. You're not great development, but you're a very nice fellow and people like you. I like the people like you. But I think we'll keep Mr. Swan as the bench coach. Even if he's not actually a swan. Which I really feel like is false advertising, but whatever. Urban Shocker and Jesse Barnes both made the team. Heine Zimmerman made it, and that's it. Me, me, me. I have Ty Cobb, so I think I have a great team. Me, me, me. Whatever, bro.
Whatever, bro. Come on, Boston. Just push that tiny bit harder. Let it let us unleash our secret weapons. Don't tell me you got better again, Yule. You got better again. And you throw harder. I'm... How do I keep you out of the majors at this point? He's so insanely good. He is so insanely good. Game. Like, Kovalevsky is certainly nothing to get excited about. There's nothing in his skill set that suggests to me that he's amazing. But overall, it's already 38. So it's not like I feel an extreme push to kick him out of the rotation just yet. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Am I going to trade Kovaleski? Like, this is the best possible reason to have to trade someone, right? Because someone is so damn good in the minor leagues, they're like, you cannot afford to keep me in the majors any minors any longer. And Kovaleski still got like one extra level. Bruh. Bruh. What can I get for you? I could pick up Red Cowsey, who looks like he could be a damn fine starter one day. He is a side armor, this is true, which means he may have a bit more of a of a limited career. Fred Nicholson seems like a very, very fine hitter. He's maybe needs a bit of seasoning, but he seems like he's a pretty good sort. Huh. Let's get stupid, right? Let's just get utterly ridiculous and see if I can get, like, one of the best players in the majors. Like a guy in the 60s or 70s. I cannot. So... I could honestly send Kovaleski to the minors. Like, it feels like an insult, but I don't think he'll be there long, especially if overall starts to decline. But Yule is too good. He's too good a pitcher. He makes his team better right now. And Kovaleski's honestly not having a great season. He's having a good season, but he's not having a great season. So, Stan, I'm really sorry, but I can't. I cannot see a pitcher pitch this damn well in the minors and then tell him you must stay in the minors. I am I'm constitutionally incapable of taking a player with this level of talent and saying, nah, fam, I can't do it. And he's also a pretty darn good hitter. I don't 
I'm not even kidding. You're using Yule as a guy, right? Uh, set game strategy. Yeah, you're using him as a two-way player. You just don't have a need for him yet. That's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring Kovalevsky back to the majors as an emergency starter for the very simple fact that I want to have the option to use him in the postseason in case one of my other starters gets hurt. I could just run a five-man rotation. I just don't think that would be terribly helpful. We are at the trade deadline. Does a player exist so that we can significantly improve our chances of making the playoffs? I mean, Ray Schalk's shitty play notwithstanding, he's still a great defensive player. I gotta get a new first baseman. And Kovaleski is my best trade chip for this purpose. I'm going to throw in Sayer. Because I'm sick of your shit, dude. I'm sick of being the reliable person who says, I believe in you, you will come out of this, and then you never come out of it. I want the best damn first baseman that I can get my hands on. Stuffy McInnes might well be that that player. Is there anybody even better? Like, Sherry McGee is an amazing freaking hitter, even if he is a dog shit first baseman. I might take Sherry McGee. Uh, Art Griggs is good, but not amazing. Fred Merkel is the same. Sherry McGee makes me better right now. But Stuffy McKenna seems like the better choice going forward. Like, I know he doesn't have the raw power that your average uh, top of, the, top of the, the, the cream of the crop first baseman has. But he's been such a good hitter for so long that I think he's probably what I want. I think Stuffy McInnes is exactly what we want on this team. And he's younger. Otherwise, Sherry McGee is clearly the better player. But Sherry McGee is also 34 already. And he's also struggled, right? Like, here's an example of a season he just wasn't very good at. Bring me the stuff. E. McInnes. I'm really sorry that that made you sad about losing Vic Sayer, but I can't, I can't keep punting on first base in the hopes that you figure it out. I can't do that. So, Stuffy, welcome to the team. Um, you're not batting behind Ray Schalk, that's for damn sure. You're also not batting behind Sam Rice, to be quite honest with you. Because you're a damn good sort. I do need to replace my pitcher. So I shall... Actually, I don't need to replace him because, yeah, that's fine. Thought is fine. Oh, no, you know what I just realized? I screwed myself again. Stuffy McKinnis won't be eligible for the postseason. I hate that stupid rule. Yeah, he's not eligible for the postseason because of the dumb rule where... The Roster expansion comes before or after it, not before it. Whatever. 
Uh, if he just helps us get to the postseason, I'll let freaking Wilbur Cooper play first base if that's what it takes. George Yule keeps throwing harder. Game. I love it. I'm weeping hot tears of joy. I do have a talented young star in Lefty Jewel. I'm just a little bit salty that he's gone from being the greatest hitter in Major League history to merely another guy, but whatever. Who's Ray Collins again? I don't even remember who that guy is. I do remember who that is. That's the, the starter I traded for in the offseason. But then I got George Yule. And I'm like, holy shit, bro. Bruh. Good times all around. Did we make it? <gasps> we won the pennant. Yes. I mean, we're going to have to win the pennant without freaking Stuffy McGinnis, which doesn't fill me with joy. But that's fine. Bench coach, do your thing. I believe in you. And it's World Series time, bros. Stuffy, you got us there. Uh, I want you to be aware of how much we love you, Stuffy, and how you will instantly be back next season. Uh, you got us here. You led the league in hits. You're my guy. I heart Stuffy forever. Ooh, Joe Sewell, the guy who replaced uh, Ray Chapman for the Cleveland Indians and a Hall of Famer. Bob Musel, pretty close. Pie Trainer, whatever, dude. I'm glad he kind of looks a bit like garbage. Pie Trainer's reputation is why he entered the Hall of Fame. He actually wasn't that amazing. Like, he was decent, but they were like, he's one of the best defensive third basemen in, in all of all time, and... The, the facts just don't back it up. They just don't back it up, yo. Get him done overall. What an overall outstanding performance. You know it's going to keep happening. I, I, I hope you were prepared for that. I hope you were prepared for that. Ooh, very ouch. And we're in another nine-game World Series. Uh, well done, Yule. Overall, does not get it done that time. They have a 4-2 series lead. We're going to have to sweep the rest of them to win the World Series. This has just been who has the better pitching, and so far it's been them. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you wanted it more, I guess. I'm not upset about this. I was frankly quite surprised we even made the playoffs, and let alone... Yeah, I'm fine with that. And a big part of it is that one of our best hitters was ineligible for the postseason roster because of how ridiculously silly. Did my pitching coach retire? He did. Oh yeah, fan loyalty increases. You're damn right it did. And I got a contract extension. Little do they know that, uh, that my time for the Red Sox is only one more season. Oh, you could be the new AAA pitching coach. I believe in you.
And I will hire Bill Vinton. There we go. Uh, so please join me next episode. It'll be the final uh, OTP21 uh, version of this series. But don't worry. Uh, we will port this directly into OTP22. And we'll, uh, we'll take over a new team and we'll talk about which team that'll be next episode. Until next time, though, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.